Hey, how's it going? Hey, pretty good. How you doing? Pretty good. What do we have here? I have an autographed copy of Richard Nixon's memoirs, first edition. OK. So where'd you get the book? I got it at a garage sale. I just knew it was valuable. So. Got it for 50 cents, didn't you? Yeah, <laughs> I did. <laughs> I came to the pawn shop to sell my Richard Nixon's memoirs with his signature. I would say most of the value of the book is based on the signature. Well, I'm hoping to get $2,200 for it. I never read his memoirs. I know a little bit about him. I know he was raised a Quaker. And he was a good vice president under Eisenhower. I think one of his big problems was the fact that he just assumed he was going to be president after Eisenhower. And um, through the course of a lot of things, it didn't happen. It was one of the closest elections in American history. I think it came down to less than half a million votes. And the whole Watergate thing, some people say he really didn't even know about it. What it was was people from the Republican Party broke into the Democratic headquarters. And when he found out about it, he tried to cover things up that he shouldn't. Congress was going to vote to impeach him. But before they could do that, he resigned. He repaired his reputation to a degree after a few years. Had an interesting life. Did a few bad things, but then again, I'm sure every president does. So. <laughs> <laughs> These memoirs were Nixon's attempt to clear his name and take attention away from the Watergate scandal. I'm guessing that a signed copy would be worth some money because presidential stuff usually does well. So it's signed by him? Yeah, it's actually, there's a page designed for his signature, so. OK, you're saying that's his signature in pen? Right. OK. You a fan of Richard Nixon? Well, he was kind of a little bit before my time. But I've been to the Richard Nixon uh, presidential library, so I've showed him this book already. OK. And what did they have to say about it? About five years ago, they said it was worth at least $2,500. And they think the signature is real. That is absolutely amazing how they can appraise it for $2,500. And we think it's real. <laughs> <laughs> so how much do you want for it? I'm going to ask for $2,200. All right. Just so you know, when you go to a library or something like that, um, you're dealing with people who really don't buy and sell stuff. You're dealing with people who put stuff on display. And what something is worth is very subjective. I'm going to get a friend down here. I'm going to have her take a look at it. She will give us a non-biased opinion. Hang out, maybe buy something, figure out okay. where you're going to spend oh, all that I'll money. The upside of an expert coming in is that they verify that the signature is real. Well, this is it, um, the memoirs of Tricky Dick. <laughs> it's signed. I'm assuming this was one of those limited editions where you signed them all. Yes. So this is an Eastern Press limited edition. They have a whole series of presidents that are signed. This was really controversial when it first came out. He made a deal with an advance for $2.5 million. This is in the 1970s. It's a lot of money. And people were infuriated by this idea that he would make a ton of money after he had just resigned for not being a crook. Okay. <laughs> so even before the book first comes out, there are whole committees saying boycott Nixon's memoirs and don't buy books by crooks. OK. Kind of clever, right? Uh, yeah. uh. I mean, it probably backfired on him, because when everyone's boycotting it, everyone's talking about the book. And everyone talks about the book. You probably want to read the book that everyone's talking about. That is the problem. Mark Twain's book, Huckleberry Finn, was banned in his local library. And his reaction to that was, oh, that'll sell us 20,000 copies for sure. <laughs> You'd imagine Nixon's memoir would be a little bit juicier than most other presidents, Eisenhower, et cetera, because there's a lot of drama going on behind the scenes. He writes about his resignation. He writes about the White House tapes. There are a lot of kind of juicy tidbits in there that people wanted to know. So the big question, what's it worth? I mean, yes. it's... So the first edition, which is generally what collectors want, a signed first edition goes for about $1,000. This is from 1988. The first edition came out in 1978. This is not a first edition. But it does have a signature. And the nice thing about the Easton Press is you don't have to worry about the authenticity. If it's signed on this limitation page here, you're good. OK. So I'm looking more towards around $250. I just crush hopes and dreams. It's just part of my job. Sorry. It's a bummer. Thank you. Glad I could help. Take care. Thanks. Mm -hmm. The Eastern Press has genuine leather. They try to do really nice things. That said, there are a lot of other fine presses who have particular attention to detail that I personally appreciate more. So will you take 100 bucks for it? Uh, would you be willing to go 200? 
Nixon stuff is just tough. It's like um, Pete Rose. I mean, he's he has the reputation of being tainted. The price of his stuff goes down. It is difficult to sell. I'll tell you what. If you go maybe 130, I'll I'll do 130. 125 bucks. Okay, 125. Okay. Thanks, man. All right, let's go right over there and we'll write it up. You know what? Maybe I'll read it. Can't be that bad. I'm really disappointed. I thought it was uh, worth a lot more than that. Next time, I'm going to bring in my first edition Donna Summers book with her signature. Got this awesome Ronald Reagan foam head from the 1980 Republican convention. Okay, and how in the world did you get this? When I was 19, a buddy of mine uh, snuck into the convention area. We grabbed it, and I've had it ever since. At 19, I guarantee you I was not going to any political conventions. <laughs> I'm here to sell my 1980 Ronald Reagan foam head. I've searched and searched online, and as far as I can tell, this is the only one I found in existence. So I know they're very rare and hard to come by. You must be a real big Reagan fan. Absolutely. He was one of the best presidents of the 20th century. You know, he ended the Cold War. Yes. And the guy took a bullet. <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? What country in the world does that happen in? Only in America. So what are you looking to do with it? I'm looking to sell it. With this crazy political time that we're having now, I just figured it'd be a good time to capitalize on it. One of the great things you've got here is that Reagan, probably one of the most popular presidents right now. His stuff is selling for more than most. That being said, you do just have a foam head here. It's collectible. It's not gold. What are you looking to get for it? Uh, I'm looking to get 500 for it. I mean, it is cool, but I'm thinking more around 150 bucks. I mean, in this time, you know people are going to eat this up once they see it. I can't take 150. I'll come down to 400. But you'll take three, huh? 350? 300. 350? 300. 325? Bedtime for Bonzo is not that great of a movie. True, but as a president, we know how good he was. Absolutely, that's why you're getting 300. Just take 300 bucks. Come on, it's a foam Ronald Reagan head. Yeah, my mom will be happy I'm getting rid of it <laughs> too. Right, cool. 300 bucks. bucks. Sounds like a plan. All right, we'll meet me over there, we'll do some paperwork. Okay. We started out at 500 and it trickled down to 300. Considering I didn't pay anything for it, I think it's a good deal. Drum roll. Whoa. Yeah. So is this George Washington's too? It is. It's a three-piece suit that he acquired sometime in the mid-18th century. It's amazing that it held up so well. He's a pretty fit guy. No, he was 6'2". He was, he was a tall man, but he wasn't a really large man. So our mannequin's a little short. <laughs> <laughs> I purchased this George Washington suit over 21 years ago, and it was one of my first major purchases for my collection of Americana. It's a major highlight of my collection. But if Rick really wants me to put a price on it, I'm going to put a price on it for him today. I mean, it's like an awe. It is amazing. If I could go back and have a cup of coffee with just about anybody in history, it'd probably be this guy. He could have been elected president until the day he died, but he stepped down after two terms, and he set the standard for presidents to come. To me, he's one of the most amazing men in history. He really is. Oh, yeah. So where'd you get it? It was passed down from family member to family member, and it ended up in an auction in New York City. I was able to purchase it there. A highlight of my collection until I purchased the Washington sword. So it dropped down to number two. <laughs> <laughs> Do we know the date on this thing? I think it's from the 1750s or 60s. Okay. Back then, it was pink. And you can still see some of the pink in this area. You know, Washington was always very aware of how he presented himself. Pink would have been a bright color and one that really would have set you off as, you know, fashion-conscious individual. And it's all silk? All silk. I'm impressed. So you think this is all legit and everything, right? Yes, I think it is. On a piece like this, what it's dependent on is provenance. There are missing pieces, that oh, sort sure. of thing. But that's minimal. But for being giving, over 200 yeah, years old. Exactly. You just don't see a piece of Americana like this very often. This is just amazing. Absolutely. So you enticed me with a sword that's not for sale. And this thing right here, does it have a price on it? 
Well, it's one of my highlights of my collection. But everything has a price. Well, I'll let you guys work that out. Very good to see you, Rick. Good to see you. We'll see you back in Vegas. Take care. So how much? Uh, I wouldn't sell for less than $3 million. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of suit. I don't think I'd ever say this, but I'm actually considering this. I mean, it's George Washington suit. I mean, it never occurred to me that one would be available. I'm going to go think and contemplate about this for a little bit. Can we meet up later? Absolutely. All right, um, I'm intrigued. I'll talk to you soon. OK, thanks, Rick. That's cool. So I'm back at the hotel. I'm seeing Brian. I'm ready to sit down and have a serious conversation with him. I'm back. You're back. <laughs> he wants $100,000 for the Paul Revere spoons and $3 million for George Washington's suit. I've been offered items in the millions of dollars before, but I've never really considered them until now. Um, the suit. OK. Um, you yeah, ask for $3 million, right. but what's the best you can do? 1.5? No, I, I appreciate your offer, but it's really a major part of my collection. How about $2 million? Um, since we're friends, I would, the best price, absolute best price would be two and a half million. OK, and you're firm at that? Absolutely firm at that. I mean, OK, well, I guess the suit's out then. I didn't get the suit, but you know what? It didn't fit me anyway. <laughs> what do you have? Well, I have FDR film footage from 1882 to 1945. OK, I don't think you have enough film footage here for that. That's uh, it's almost 60 years of film. <laughs> Decided today to come to the pawn shop to try and sell this FDR footage that I have. If it's footage that's never been seen before, I feel the value of it is unlimited. Where'd you get this? Well, my husband's cousin died, and that was in his stuff. OK, and do you have any idea what's on it? We've never watched the film. You could possibly have a very expensive holy grail type item here. This isn't the first time someone's come in here with FDR footage. We've had it before, but we've never had film that shows something that nobody's seen before. That would be worth a pile of money. FDR was one of the greatest presidents that there was. Social Security, the Second World War. All behind the scenes being in a wheelchair because of the polio he had when he was a kid. Right. And to say how well people like this guy, I mean, they elected him four times. Mm -hmm. They actually made a constitutional amendment that it can't happen anymore. This guy literally could have been king of the United States if he would have stayed alive long enough. Mm -hmm. Do you mind if I open it up? No, you go ahead, open it up. OK. I mean, is there any relationship to the White House in no. your family that you can no. think of? So I mean, theoretically, it could be Frank DeRoe. It could be. Pretty much all we have to go on here is it says FDR 1882 through 1945. Yep. That was his lifespan, Corey. Yep. If this is unseen footage of FDR, it can be insanely valuable. You would have historians and collectors literally fighting over it. We're dealing with a lot of unknowns here. I'm going to call in a buddy of mine, Mark Hall Patton, and uh, we'll set it up and watch a movie together. Sound like a date? Yes, it does. All right, thanks a lot. Bring the popcorn. Thank you. Mark Hall, my How man. How you doing? I've been dealing with artifacts of many different varieties for 35 years now in various museums. So here's what I called you about. Okay. Supposed yeah. to be FDR footage. Have you ever no. seen it? Do you know I've what's on it? I've never seen it, no. Okay, yeah, that's regular eight. The one thing I can tell you right now is it is not from 1882. Mm -hmm. Because they didn't invent eight millimeter film until 1932. Oh, okay. Roosevelt was president from 32 till 1945. So it is quite possible a lot of people did shoot just home footage of him. But there was also a lot of commercial movies done because he was so famous and so well known, and it was such an important period in our history. FDR was our first and only four-term president. 
He came along right at the beginning of the Great Depression. He also ended up being our wartime president for World War II. This was a man who really changed the United States. If somebody happened to be in a place where they could catch him involved in something fairly unusual, uh, if he was trying to walk, for example, but he could only do that when he was leaning on somebody's arm because he was so crippled from the polio. Better yet, footage of him in his wheelchair. Yes, absolutely, because he did not want to get filmed in a in wheelchair. wheelchair. Do you have an eight millimeter projector? Yes, I do. All right, well, we can go take a look at oh, it. That's great, I like to see what's on it. Come on, Corey, let's go watch this. I'm really interested in seeing what they have in store here, because if this is original footage, this could be very interesting. It could, in fact, be quite valuable. If it's something that we haven't seen before, this could be very important. Let's roll it, Mark. That's FDR, all right. But... Yeah, this is not original footage. So what it looks like is maybe a mixture of campaign footage and kind of a story of his life, pretty much all stock commercial footage. It's a biography of him, but it's a commercially produced biography. There would have been a number of them produced. It's probably in public hands at this point. What this is is basically just a documentary. This is like what you'd buy on DVD today. I just don't think we're going to be able to do anything with it. I can understand. I was hoping that it was original, you know, non-scene footage. But in watching it, the quality of the film is really good. So I'm going to donate it. I have John F. Kennedy's cigar box he used in the White House. Wow, Pops, check this out. This is John F. Kennedy's cigar box. It sure is. And inside are the remaining unsmoked cigars. Wow, really? John F. Kennedy brought the cigar box to the White House. So it was in the Oval Office. I'm in the private museum, and I'm trying to raise money to get into a bigger facility. I'm asking $95,000, but I'm not sure how low I'll go. I'm just going to kind of feel it out when I get in there. So where did you get it? Mrs. Lincoln, as personal secretary, befriended a man named Robert White. And she gave quite a few items to Robert White. So I made a private deal with the White Estate to buy some of the items. All right. His personal cigar box sold for over half a million dollars to the guy who owns Cigar Aficionado magazine. It did, but he didn't use that one. This is the one he actually used. This is the auction catalog. And there is a picture in here. OK. The box contains 11 hand-rolled cigars wrapped in clear plastic. What do we got there? Eight. There's a few missing. So someone smoked three of the cigars? Not me. That's how I got it. Perfecto Garcia Incense? Is that what it says on them? Perfecto Garcia Incense, yes. These are the ones that were left over. You know, if he would have lived, these would have been smoked. JFK absolutely loved his cigars. And to actually have a cigar box that sat on his desk in the Oval Office is just one of those things I can only dream about. Do you have paperwork on this stuff? Mm-hmm. It's documented by his personal secretary, Evelyn Lincoln. All right. She was there every day. And here you can see a description of the box. This brown mahogany cigar box with a silver plaque was given to President John F. Kennedy by a friend on his birthday, May 29th, 1962. OK. Do you have a receipt from White? I don't have that with me. See, I have... the whole thing is, I hate it when like the chain of custody is broken. You know what I mean? This is one of those once-in-a-lifetime items. If I let this thing walk out the door, I'm never going to see another one like it. How much are you asking? Well, as you know, the other comparable one went for half a million bucks or so. I need some quick cash, or else I would just put that in an auction and get 150, 200 grand, whatever it's going to go for. Mm. I'll give it to you for 95,000. I think the auction estimate was 100, and it didn't meet it. And you have some other documentation from the white collection that you bought all this stuff from. I could get you a letter from Robert L. White's widow saying that I purchased the entire collection. OK. I'll give you 50 grand. Uh, I can't do that. 
That's cash right now. 70. What do you think, son? I wouldn't pay more than 50 grand pops. It's up to you. Um, I'll go 60. All right. It's all on you. I'm out. 65, and you got a deal. 60 grand. I'll give you 30 now. Give me the rest of the paperwork. I'll give you the other 30. You got it, man. All right. Meet you right over there, and we'll do some paperwork. OK. I took 60. It's fine, because if I would have put it in an auction, I would have had to wait about six months. We need money now to get this new facility, so I'm good. I have President Johnson's golf ball. All right, so how do you know this is President Johnson's golf ball? Because he hit my dad with it down in Mexico. He hit your dad with a golf ball? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Came down to the pawn shop today to try to sell my Lyndon B. Johnson personalized golf ball. I'm trying to sell it today because it's just collecting dust. I'm asking for a couple hundred. I'll be happy with around 150. Give me the whole story from the beginning. President Johnson hit over the trees into my father and never yelled for so when it hit him, he bent over, picked it up, put it in his pocket. And when President Johnson came over, drunk off his ass, he goes, just keep the ball. When you're playing golf and you hit the ball towards someone else, you're supposed to yell, four, to warn them, even if you're President of the United States. <laughs> Did you sign it or anything, or? No, they just printed it up with his initials on there. It's definitely cooler than an autograph. A personal item of his, a lot less common than an autograph. At Johnson, he became president in 63 when Kennedy was assassinated. I personally believe he didn't run for re-election because he knew he couldn't win. He got us so deep into the Vietnam War. LBJ did some good things when he was in office. He stood up for civil rights, even when other people in his party opposed it. But he also escalated the war in Vietnam, and a lot of guys died. Here's my concerns. Your dad said this was LBJ's ball. I don't know if you got the only one or if there's a 1,000 of them. I just don't know. Uh, what do you want to do with it? sell it. How much did you want for it? I was hoping to get a couple hundred. All right, let me get a buddy of mine in here. Let him look at it. He'll know exactly what it is the second he sees it. OK. Yeah, I love to buy stuff unique and related to presidents. Let me just figure out what it's worth, though. OK. okay. If I can prove this golf ball was owned by LBJ, there's no question I want it. But I don't know if there's really a way to prove it. It's not like he signed it. Hey, man, how's it going? The guys called me down to the pawn shop today because they have a golf ball that might have been used by President Lyndon B. Johnson, and I'm excited to take a look at it. A lot of the presidents played so many different sports over the history. I mean, you have Obama, who's big into basketball. Roosevelt was big into tennis. Reagan played football. Remember the Gipper? Of course. <laughs> Pretty much every president, especially modern presidents, play golf whether they like it or not. Lyndon B. Johnson is not known to be an avid golfer, but he did play for political reasons. I've seen a few golf balls from different presidents over the years. They don't come up too often on the secondary market, however. So, Rick, what are your concerns about this golf ball? I mean, I just have no idea how rare it is or if it's even real. Well, Rick, this ball, as you can see, it says True Sphere on it. It's got the number three, and it's got some scribble of what appears to be Lyndon B. Johnson's initials. I have seen this ball before without the initials, and normally what you would see right here where his initials are is the name of the company. It was a company called AJ, and they made balls during the 1960s, and they did all sorts of different things like bags and accessories, you know, commemorative items for, like, Jack Nicholas, Arnold Palmer, and so on. Basically, the question is, why are Lyndon B. Johnson's initials on this? With presidential items, once you're in the White House, you get all sorts of cool freebies. Anything from glasses, you know, pens, and in this case, he obviously got some golf balls. So do you think that was the president's golf ball? There's absolutely no way to be 100% sure. First of all, this company is no longer in business. And also, information with presidential items that they received as gifts in the 1960s wasn't recorded too well, not even in the archives. What I can tell you about it, based on other items I have seen from other presidents, it is true to the period, and I've never seen variations of them. So it does appear to be certainly genuine. All right, so what do you think it's worth? Based on items I've seen from uh, similar presidents like Richard Nixon around the same era, I'd probably put this right around $500. OK. Wow. All right, thanks for coming in, man. You I got appreciate it, it. Thanks a lot. You got it, Corey. Hey, man, the ball, the ball. <laughs> All right, so how much you want for it? Well, since he said it's worth about five, like three. How about two and a quarter? You know, it'll sell, but um, it's not going to be a quick sell. You can do a 275. You know, it's President Johnson's golf ball. 
I'll tell you what, 250. We're not talking Ronald Reagan's football. We're not talking Kennedy. We're talking Johnson. 275, we got a deal. I'll go 250. That's the most I can go. I can live with 250. All right, 250. I settled for 250 on it. Now that I got some money, I'm going to take my wife out to dinner and maybe a show. What I have here is a couple of belt buckles that was actually commissioned for President Gerald Ford. Pretty amazing. You know, he's basically remembered for being really clumsy. He was getting off Air Force One. He came down, he fell down the stairs. Yeah. And like a week later, he did it again. <laughs> <laughs> I decided to sell a couple of belt buckles that actually belonged to former President Gerald Ford for my wife's aunt. She can use the money at this time. I came here with hopes of getting about uh, $5,000. A lot of people didn't like him. You know, he's coming right out of the Watergate scandal. That's how he got in. Gerald Ford became president when Richard Nixon resigned. He was actually the only president ever in office that wasn't elected by the Electoral College. How'd you get him? My wife's aunt worked in the thrift store. They were brought in. I actually contacted the company, and they responded to me, stating that this is the actual belt buckle that was done for President Ford. Stuff related to rock star presidents, like JFK, can go for huge numbers. Stuff from less iconic presidents, like Gerald Ford, is not as valuable, but there's still a market for it. What were you looking to do with these? I'm basically here to sell these. Now, here's the big question. How much do you want? About. 5,000 um, for the set. Not going to happen. OK. I'm assuming this was like a mass-produced piece. It's a really simple casting. I mean, there's nothing really spectacular about it. This right here, on the other hand, you can tell it's all hand done. Damn, I wish it was owned by a different president. <laughs> <laughs> this one I'd give you like 1,200 bucks for. It's going to be a difficult sell. It really is. There's not a lot of Ford fans out there. But it's a presidential. I, and that's why I'm offering you that kind of money. What number would you take? My absolute low that I, I came in here with was somewhere around 3,500. I just can't do it. Even Nixon I would pay more for. You know, 1,200's it. OK. I, I can't let it go for 1,200. Okay. Thanks for bringing it in, though, man. I'd love to buy just about anything that belonged to a US president. But Ford, nothing against the guy? but it might have sat around for a little while. All right, what do you have here? I've got a handwritten letter from George Washington himself. Where did you get this? So I found it at an estate sale in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, bought a nice decorative mirror. Get to the house, go to put the mirror up, and the cloth that covered the back of it ripped open and taped underneath down at the very bottom was that guy right there. This is really interesting. How much you want for it? About 3,500. Something like this that deals with a historic event, we're probably talking a lot more. My best guess at the moment is if this letter is all legit, it should be worth at least $100,000. Wow. I'm just not buying the fact that a handwritten letter from George Washington was just found in the back of a mirror. People spend a lot of money faking things that are worth this kind of money. So I'm going to call someone up. I'm going to get him down here. I'm going to get him to look at this. OK. Just the thought of leaving here today with a big sack of cash, it, it gives you a lot of anxiety, but it makes you excited, too. Stuart. Hey, how are you, Rick? Good. Hey, Corey, good to see you again. With this much cash on the line, I need to be 100% sure. And Stewart is my go-to guy on historical documents. I was really excited when you called me over because this is actually pretty important American history. But this is one of the first times that George Washington really used the power of the federal government. People were uh, okay. uprising in uh, western Pennsylvania, didn't want to pay taxes, tarring and feathering the uh, tax collectors, which may still be a famous uh, American pastime these days. I don't think it's a bad idea. <laughs> All right, what questions can I answer for you, Rick? OK. Is it really signed by George Washington? And how much is the damn thing worth? OK. In the uh, pantheon of American presidential autographs, there are three at the top, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and Abraham Lincoln. 
About 10 years ago, there were a couple George Washington letters that dealt with the Whiskey Rebellion that sold for about $120,000, $130,000 at auction. It would probably be higher now. There are a few things I use to authenticate these types of documents. So first, I'm looking for period paper. They used what's called laid paper back then. So there should be parallel lines about an inch apart if you hold it up to the light. See those lines uh, that run yeah. down? So that definitely is period paper. That's a good sign for you. The next thing I want to check is to make sure this is in George Washington's handwriting. So I brought in an example here. Let's look at a commonly used word like the. So we can find a word the there and a the there. And if we start looking at the overall feel of it, the letter formation, completely different. So unfortunately, this is not in George Washington's handwriting. One thing this could possibly be is the body of the letter is in Washington's secretary's handwriting, and Washington signed the letter. All right. Let's come over here and look at the George Washington side by side. Here, he signs G.E.O. Washington, where in life, he usually signed G.O. Washington. You can see that it's very different than the way it's written over here. Yeah, so I don't think this is in George Washington's handwriting or signed by George Washington at all. Ah, that sucks. Do you have a really nice napkin? However, I do believe it is old and antique. This is called a contemporary copy. It probably is 220 years old. If somebody wanted to keep a record of the original, they would make a copy for themselves. This probably has a retail value of about $4,000. Nice. So you're telling me that a copy is actually worth $4,000. Right. Copies can be worth money. Um, and this one has really terrific content. This would be about as good a contemporary copy as you can get. All right. Well, thanks for busting your Anytime. bubble. <laughs> thanks, All right. Buddy. Nice to see you again. When I came over to the shop, I knew that the original George Washington letter was in the Library of Congress. However, sometimes famous people make more than one copy of famous letters, and I thought perhaps this would be one of them. For example, Abraham Lincoln actually wrote out five different copies of the Gettysburg Address in his lifetime. I don't mean to beat you up, but I'll give you a thousand bucks for it. Uh, I feel like that's leaving $3,000 for you to just snatch up the next time somebody comes along to buy it. Let's go 2,000. I'll be out the door right now with two grand. I'll tell you what, I'll give you 1,500 bucks. That's the best I can go. Look around my shop, you'll find all kinds of things from the 1700s. 1,500, you got a deal. All right, write them up, Corey. All right, man, come with me. $1,500 is a lot of money. To be able to walk away with just that today, uh, I'm pretty satisfied, feels good. Uh, I got Ronald Reagan's senior yearbook and a letter that's signed by Reagan. Did he sign the yearbook at all? No, there's no signatures at all in the yearbook. I hate when people do that. So how did you sign people's yearbook? Uh, for the guys, I would just sign, you know, have a nice summer, nice to know you. For the girls, I would just leave my number. Okay. <laughs> Came down to the pawn shop today to try and sell my Reagan yearbook and signed letter I got. It's time to sell it so we can buy the car my mom wants. I'd like to get $2,500 for it today. I don't think I'd take any less than $1,500. So where did you get this stuff? Uh, the yearbook was my grandpa's. He went to school with Ronald Reagan. Of the one person in the whole year, they spelled his name wrong, the one that ends up being the president. Donald Reagan, his nickname was Dutch. Life is a grand, sweet song. Start the music. It's really deep. This is really cool. Uh, Ronald Reagan was chosen as president of the student body. I mean, look, here's like a high school play that Reagan was a part of. Here he is on the football team. I mean, you can't deny the guy was definitely an overachiever. When you think of all the things Ronald Reagan accomplished in his life, being an actor, president of the United States, it's kind of funny to look at him as your typical teenager who played football and starred in the school play. I bet the editor of the yearbook is still kicking himself for getting his name wrong. The letter. My dad was doing a fundraising auction, and being from Dixon, Ronald Reagan's hometown, they decided to see if he'd come back and try and help him raise some money for it. Did he come back? Nope. As the letter says, he was on the campaign trail, so he wasn't able to make it back in time. 
And I'm sorry I missed the Dixon JC's benefit and hope you will give me another opportunity in the future. Ronald Reagan. P.S. I remember your parents very well and Bill was a good friend of mine. They must have known each other pretty well. I know he saved my grandma when he was a lifeguard at the river there. Apparently he was a ladies man and they'd go out and act like they were drowning in the river. Grandma knew how to get guys' <laughs> attention. That's right. My dad is a huge Ronald Reagan fan and we've sold a ton of Reagan memorabilia. Both the book and the letter look legit. I just gotta know how to price them. You mind if I call a buddy of mine down here? I'm just not really, it's not that I think you're lying, I just like to have it checked out more. I kinda wanna know what his signature's going for these days. Look. All right, got a couple things for you to look at. Yeah, you were talking about Reagan pieces, huh? You guys usually call me when they have questions with regard to autographs and all different aspects of a document to determine if it's authentic or not. You're gonna have to buzz out the magnifying glass. Can yep. you tell from here? Yeah, absolutely. We're gonna check out the details. Forgers can easily print up a letterhead, you know, make it look official. Well, one major thing that uh, we're always gonna be looking for is the capital R is always supposed to be larger in the first name than in the last name. Well, I need to see that the D is tilted back a bit because that's a style that he would always do. Very interesting. T bars are at the top. Okay, if we take all the evidence together in its totality. This is beautiful, this is 100% authentic. Great, I was glad to hear that it was real. It's pretty cool having something that's signed by Reagan, but it's time to sell it and get some money. So what do you think it's worth? It's not while he was president. If he was president, it'd be worth more. But uh, it is on his personal letterhead. Um, you get a little personalization writing down at the bottom. I would say altogether, the value of both the book and the letter, you know, if you frame it up nice, retail $2,500, $3,000. Really? Yeah, right about there. Great. All right. Looks like he scored. <laughs> All right. Congratulations. I think it's very fascinating that the guy's grandfather knew Ronald Reagan before he was anybody. Very interesting piece, definitely. So what do you think, Big Hoss? Thinking around 1800 <laughs> I'm thinking, I mean, he said 25 to three grand, so how about 2,500? I would offer you that, ma'am, but I'm gonna have to frame it and this is all gonna have to go together in one piece and it's gonna have to be in a way that I can present it and sell it to somebody. 2,100. I mean, where else are you gonna get another one? Senior yearbook, signed letter, personalized? Well, if it was personalized to me, it'd be worth something, but... Uh, I'll give you two grand if it helps you out. All right, do. We settled on 2,000. It's a little bit less than I was hoping for, but I think it's a fair price. You're glad to have the money. 